Okay, we're looking at the second year stats and mechanics textbook and we're on chapter four which is on moments and we're looking at exercise 4e which is on tilting um so question six so it's an exam question which is good because it means we can see how many marks it's worth so that tells us roughly how, how tricky it should be or how long it should take uh problem solving which means that it, there is going to be a bit to think about um so let's have a read okay so this one is slightly different to the rest of the uh, exercise in that it's not supported on on um supports it's it's held by two wires but it, it can still tilt so in this um situation if something is tilting so we'll, we'll read on through the question shortly but basically it says it's going to tilt about n what that would mean is that the you know the the string will so if you, if you just imagine if you put a really heavy weight at q it just means that the um end q could move down and end p could move up and apologies that's supposed to be like a, a, a not taught per wire um and it would just be that the wire at n was still you know held um, held taut held straight 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 longer uh b have any tension in it okay it was probably clear as mud but well hopefully the maths will make it a bit clearer okay so so we've got to show that question so that's that's nice because it means we'll know we've got the right answer um we're talking generally in terms of A, so that can make it a bit trickier, but it's only worth three marks. So it shouldn't, hopefully, shouldn't be anything too, too horrible. Um, okay, so we've got a string. So we've got our two wires at M and N. So potentially, so rather than reaction forces, we're talking tensions now. So potentially, there's uh, tension in each of those strings. We'll come back to that. Um, it's a, oh, right, okay, so it's a non-uniform beam. Um, so the center of mass is at O, and that's part of what we're going to try and find. Okay, so it's not uniform. The center of mass is at O, and that's where the weight of the beam is going to act. And the mass of the beam is M, so the weight of the beam is MG. And that's at O, which we are basically, we're, we're going to try and find the distance from, from O to N. Um, I'm given some lengths. Let's label those in. Okay, and then a particle is placed at Q, so the very end, and the mass of the particle is three quarters M, so the weight of the particle is three quarters Mg. Okay, so if it's on the point of tipping about N, that means that the tension um, in the string at M would be zero. So apologies, my terrible drawing before, but basically that means that it's about that. That is just if we put any more weight there, then N Q would pull down and N P would start to tilt up. And that would mean that this wire was no longer supporting the beam at all. So this wire would no longer be, be, be um, taut. So the tension in it would be zero. Okay. Um, so that should hopefully then be enough for us to figure out this distance here. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll label X on my diagram, but they're referring to it as ON, so we'll, we'll call it that in our, our working. Um, okay, so yeah, so the actual calculation is going to be pretty straightforward, so that's why it's only worth three marks, because the tricky bit is structuring it in the first place. Okay, so um, let's move something up a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to take moments about N. Okay, so because it's on the point of tilting, so there is no tension at M, only two forces are those two weights. So I've got the weight of the actual um, rod or beam. Um, so that's a force of Mg times the distance of X, or you can call it X, but let's call it On because that's, that's what we're referring to as in the question. So that's going to be um, pulling... So I'm doing, I'm doing moments about N, so that's my, my sort of pivot. So that's going to be pulling the left-hand side down, so trying to turn the beam um, anti-clockwise. 
and that's not happening. So that must equal the clockwise moment, which is going to be the, the force of three quarters mg um, times the distance of 2a. Okay, so let's not overcomplicate um, the, the working here. I can cancel both sides through by mg. So in fact, we're pretty much there. So on, so three quarters times two is going to be three over two a. And we will just double check that is what it should be. Yeah, that's always good. And as it was a proof, I'm just going to put as required. Um, okay, so so that's my three marks. Yeah, and like I said, most of those marks are really just from the thought process. The, the actual calculation we did was pretty straightforward. Right. So, so let's think about B. So B is worth five marks, so this, and this is probably where the problem solving bit is going to come in. So find the magnitude and the tension of the wire attached at point N in terms of M. Okay, so particle is removed and replaced at the midpoint. So let's... Okay, so let's draw that out. So I've got PQ, I've got my wires at M and N. Um, the particle has been removed and is, but is now attached to the midpoint. Oh, it would help if you could see what I was drawing. Right, okay, so, so I've just drawn out the beam again. I'll, I'll label the lengths in um, in a second. So the particle is now at the midpoint and the particle had a mass of three quarters m. So it has a weight three quarters mg. Um, then the center of mass is what we just worked out. So we know, we know where that is. So we can label all these lengths on shortly. Um, it's still, um, remains in equilibrium, so we want the magnitude of the tension in the wire at N. Okay, so it's no longer on the point of tipping, necessarily. So we've got two tensions there, um, and I want the tension in, sorry, I've got memory of a sieve. Uh, I want the tension at N. Okay, so if I want the tension at N, the sensible thing is going to be to take moments about m, because if I take moments about m, I don't need to include the force at m, so I don't need to include the tension at m. So I would just need to consider these three forces. I know these two. Um, I know, well, I, I know them in terms of m, but that's fine because they want my answer in terms of m. So we want to take moments about m. Um, if, I, if, if you cracked on with this and, and didn't do that, if you took moments about n, for example, and you found the tension in m, you could then use that to work out the tension in N, but this, this I think is the, the quickest way to do it. Okay, so let's get the distances that we need. So this is, so the weight was um, attached halfway along the beam. So the halfway along the beam is going to be 4A. That's A, so that's going to be 3A. Yeah, if that's A and that's halfway along the beam, then the distance from M, which is the distance I want, is 3A. Um, okay, this is, so the distance between M and N is going to be 5A, I think. Yeah, because oh, the whole thing is 8A. That's A, that's 2A. So if I do 8A, take away 3A. The distance between those two must be 5A. And then I know O N is uh, 3 over 2a, but that's not the distance I want. Let's just put it all the way down here. I want the distance between O and M. So that's fine. That's going to be 5a minus 3 over 2a, which I'm going to say is 7 over 2a. Let me just check, check that in a second. Uh, yeah, then that should be 7 over 2a. Don't be annoyed if that's wrong and I have to do the whole video again. Okay. Um, right, so let's move this down a little bit. Okay, so I'm taking moments. Oh, doesn't matter what color that is, right? I'm taking moments um, about M. So what have I got? Well, I've got those two forces pulling down 
And if they're pulling down to the right of them, they're going to be trying to turn the plank um, or the beam clockwise. They're pulling down on that end. So that's going to be a force of three quarters mg times the distance of 3a plus a force of mg times the distance of 7 over 2a. And then I've got the tension in N pulling up. So if it's to the right and it's of M and it's pulling up, that's going to be trying to turn the whole thing anti-clockwise. So that's going to be the tension in N, which we're trying to find times the distance of 5A. Okay, so definitely want to cancel 3 by A, make it a little bit easier. Um, I can't cancel 3 by MG because the right-hand side doesn't have an MG, but never mind. Okay, so um, 3 quarters MG times 3 is going to be, no, that's just 9, not A, 9 over 4 MG. 7 over 2 MG equals 5 times the tension at N. So 9 over 4 plus 7 over 2 is 23 over 4 mg is 5 times the tension in n. So hopefully, multiply that by 5, the tension in m is 23 over 20 mg. So it said leave our answer in terms of m. It didn't say you had to leave it in terms of g. So if you multiply 3 by 9.8, that would be okay. But we if we're leaving it in terms of n, we might as well leave it in terms of g as well. Um, let's put newtons just in case. And let's keep our fingers crossed. Is that what we got? Yes, we did. Brilliant. 